So I thought it might be interesting to do some commentary on the first game of the finals of the 2020 War of the Ring online tournament. This is me as Shadow against Jay Nelson as Free, and I'm loading the replay, and I went ahead and included our passwords in the log in case you want to review it yourself, and also I'm looking at the hands. So obviously I didn't know that's what he had drawn at the beginning of the game. My start, I'll mostly talk about it from my perspective. Um, obviously my start is really good. Warm of Sorrow and Toil is perhaps the best card you can draw at the very beginning of the game. A shadow, I think. Um, certainly, I mean, as a character card, seems really good. And uh, this is a great Shadows on the Misty Mountain is a great start for me as well on the mustering side. So here we go. Let's see what happens. I get three eyes, only one muster. That's obviously a little disappointing. You want two musters to be able to get Saruman. Maybe I should have only allocated one eye, but I was happy to play a slightly slower game. He gets a nice start with two Wills of the West. I don't know if he's going to move twice. He could do a whole bunch of mustering and get elves to war and even get an extra elf in there, but I'm assuming he's going to move at least once, probably twice. We'll see what happens. So he musters elves. I go ahead and muster, uh, let's see. I just do a move. Sure, a single move. It seems reasonable. At this point, I'm thinking it's going to take me a while to get my armies to war, so I might as well use the time with characters and army dice to move up to um, the north. So my plan at this moment is to go uh, attack the north. We'll see how it goes. All right, so he gets the elves very close to war on his first two dice. I'm definitely worried now that he has charge, or, or not charge, um, certain ships. So I'm wary of Dole Amroth. If you get elves early, I always think about that, or uh, Power to Great. I worry about that too. As it turns out, he did not have either of those yet, um, but it's still a reasonable strategy to get elves to war. So I'm nervous that it's not gonna work out, but we'll see. So I continue moving. And he, of course, moves the Fellowship, and I get very, I don't know, very lucky, but certainly some, somewhat lucky to hit, and then even more lucky to reveal him. So now he's out of Rivendell, I can put Nazgul on him, a bunch of stuff like that. So I go ahead and muster towards Isengard. I thought about mustering toward Sauron in case I only get one muster next turn and he brings the elves to war but then i worry he's not going to bring the elves to war so isengard is the safer bet i think in that way even a single muster lets me get saruman so he hides that makes sense and um here i'm thinking about putting a nazgul on there i don't think i don't think moving just one nazgul makes that much sense um Maybe this was a mistake. Maybe this was right. I don't know. Um, I could have gotten my armies going faster by just moving this army up north. Maybe that's what I should have done. But yeah, I still don't know. Even in retrospect, is that is that the right choice or not? It stops him perhaps from... It won't make that much of a difference on the first move, but if he gets like two or three swords next turn, then... You know, maybe it slows him down a little bit. Also, I have Warm of Sorrow and Toil, so I want to sort of strip characters out of the out of the Fellowship. So Nazgul Search, New Powers Rising. I mean, I'm just drawing great cards. These are really good cards. Um, he gets House of Steward, which is pretty useless um, at this point in the game, and Power of Tom Bombadil, not not that useful. Um, though interestingly, um, this foreshadows a little bit of what's to come. Maybe he could have managed to play it. All right, um, I don't get any musters. That's pretty unlikely, and um, I don't know exactly how unlikely, but obviously bad to not have uh, Saruman even in turn two. He gets a you know perfectly standard roll, um, and proceeds to move. My Nazgul does nothing, and he's making nice progress. I go ahead and play Warm of Sorrow and Toil now because he's going to lose some companions. It'll be nice to strip away his character cards. 
we're joking about him declaring back into Rivendell backwards uh, at the start of next turn to get rid of Warren with Star and Toil, obviously. He would never do that. Um, all right, I keep my armies moving along. I know that I have uh, Shadows on the Misty Mountain, so I'm going to be able to have a good attempt at Lorien. I'm worried about these musters because he can now pretty safely muster the elves to war and start to get elves into these strongholds that I'm clearly coming after. I think about diverting these guys to Gondor at this point, but uh, I'm thinking maybe he'll deplete the elven pool enough and then I'll be able to go after Rivendell at some point because I, or or even the Grey Havens maybe because I have new powers rising so I know I'm going to get decent armies here. It's I, I'm, I'm definitely worried about all these musters. I'm hoping okay he's going to get one elf in maybe next turn he's not going to roll that many musters so maybe these will still be soft enough targets for me to take. But I'm, I'm certainly worried without getting the muster because even even if he puts the elves to war, I, I don't even have Sauron at war. I don't even have um, Saruman, so it's not like he's giving me extra dice by getting elves to war at this point. I'm fully expecting elves to go to war this turn. He's continuing to march along. I finally managed to get a hit, and it's a zero reveal. Now, at this point, I wonder if he would have lost Gandalf. I think he probably would have. But it's not clear because I can stall Saruman till the end of next turn. That's the one benefit of getting such a late Saruman. I could delay Gandalf. At this point, it doesn't even matter because he got a zero, so he can't he can't lose Gandalf even if he wanted to. All right. Uh, it would be so nice if I had some thing that punished him for being revealed right now, but I don't. Um, keep moving my armies. I'm going to use this Palantir to play Shadows on the Misty Mountain so I can get uh, at least my thinking right now is that's what I'm going to do, so I can get get things ready to attack Lorien as soon as possible and get my army up here to Woodland Realm as soon as possible. So he, of course, gets the elves to war. Um, I play Shadows on Misty Mountain as planned, and he buffs up Lorien. Uh, that makes sense because I'm only two moves away from attacking Lorien. I'm one, two, three, four moves away from attacking Woodland Realm. So at this point, I could consider moving this army in, uh, but I'm anticipating next turn drawing some army movements, and therefore it'll be more efficient for me to do an army movement from Moria into Dimmerdale and um, Southern into Northern um, Rovania. Okay, so, you know, that's a okay turn for me. I wish I had rolled an extra muster. I did manage to reveal him and uh, slow him down a little bit. All right. So I love drawing um, these tile drawing cards. That's great, obviously. And Hell Trolls, I continue to just draw awesome cards. These are my first six cards are just six excellent cards. Very happy with that. Um, he gets certain ships now at this point, so his, I mean, uh, it's obviously good for him to have elves at war either way because uh, he's going to manage to defend these strongholds, but it's even nicer that he drew certain ships. So I would, I would, I'm always happy to, as free to draw certain ships early, uh, especially if I can manage to get the elves to war. All right, so I obviously allocate an eye. He does a clever play to turn um, Strider into the guy because he's revealed. So it gives him some options to, to hide and move the fellowship. So I'm very happy to see all these musters. That's a great, just a great role for me. I really needed them. Um, and he only gets one sword. It's obviously good that he got Strider as guide because he now is still going to be able to move when otherwise he would have just spent the whole turn hiding. I am not happy to see a shadow. I'm not happy to see these two musters from him. Uh, I'm assuming now I'm going to be taking on a, you know, just a giant uh, fortress of elves. <clears throat> What's interesting to me is he goes ahead and uses a muster to hide a strider. If it were me, I would have used a um, the palantir to hide, and then I would have been able to use the two musters to buff up my elven strongholds, which are clearly coming under attack. I think we discussed after the game that his plan was to use the Palantir for Horn of Gondor. 
Um, you know, at this point in the game, as as free, am I really worried that much about corruption? Like, maybe a little bit. Um, but not that worried. You know, I, I've managed to make it to here. I haven't... I got a 1 and a 0, and I have a full full uh, fellowship at this point. Like, and Shadow is behind on dice because they didn't roll any musters. You know what? Now they are going to get... They are going to get... Um, both i'm thinking from the free perspective you know like i sh but i i just i, I really I, I don't like this play um to hide all right so um i obviously muster in um to get oh right i forgot i wasn't i was i was really far away from attacking lorian um, it, it was it was quite lucky that I rolled as many musters as I did. I really was behind on musters, so this this was really a turning point. I think um, I don't know, maybe not turning point, but but quite quite good, very good for Shadow. I feel like I've had very good luck on cards. I obviously got a little bad luck for not having musters rounds one and two, but then it was lucky that uh, I turned it around in round three. All right, so now I can now I'm actually threatening to go into go into Lorien. Um, he proceeds to pass. I obviously now I'm really actually threatening to move in Lorien, and this was my plan from last turn. Why I used the sword um, on on this army instead of this army? It would have let me threaten Lorien one turn sooner, but it gives me more efficiency on my army movements, so I'm happy with that. I didn't think I was going to be able to rush uh, attack Lorien either way, so um, this is more efficient. And here we go. So he then chooses to muster into woodland realm which makes sense because i'm coming for woodland realm also i guess he doesn't have scouts yeah so without and he didn't really have any easy way to get to old forest road so as shadow i'm obviously very happy to not see anybody in old forest road not see scouts so i, I know i have a free path to get into um woodland realm i'm thinking maybe he has um Thrandall's archers at this point i don't i don't really know um, I'm very happy to be able to take this stronghold, um, having gone all the way from here to here when I didn't have any musters and he was like basically elves at war um, s pretty early on. So, so I'm happy, a shadow. I feel like I got a steal to be able to get into Woodland Realm with only two elites in there. So I proceed to, with my plan, um, you know, I think this move, this I don't really have anything great to do without other army movement. And I, and in fact, I didn't even use it as a muster um, because I have enough musters now. And I really want to get into Old Forest Road before he next before next turn when he might draw um, some more cards to move or dice to move these uh, northern people in. Uh, anyway, I think this is a perfectly fine early game move. These guys obviously want to do something with them at some point, even though South Rounds and East Sterlings are not at war yet. Um, at some point they will be. Also, I'm thinking if he musters too much, uh, the elves too much, then um, then certain ships becomes not a threat, uh, though he obviously still has two elven elites left. And, and I'm starting to think, okay, maybe that's why he did that. Um, he, so I'm thinking, um, you know, certain ships, as Shadow, I'm thinking certain ships maybe is a little more likely because he was reluctant to muster a bunch of elves, but I kind of feel like that's a problem for now or it's a problem for later. I still would muster more elves now while I had the chance. All right, so continuing on, um, he plays Horn of Gondor, which was his plan. He told me afterwards that's why he saved the Palantir. He wanted to be able to play Horn of Gondor. Um, I obviously... Uh, will I, I'm thinking now do I want to attack Lorien before next turn I'm only going to get one attack Am I? do I want to put Woodland Realm under siege or do I want to put Lorien under siege um, this army traveled a lot farther to get to Woodland Realm and is harder to reinforce um, so I've sort of decided at this point I do want to take on um, Woodland Realm when it's only at um, two elites and if Lorien manages to get up to four elites then so be it um, I can still take it. I have I have new powers rising. I can reinforce, uh, bring some people into Morian and get into Lorien. So, all right. 
Uh, I get the Witch King prepared to take Woodland Realm early. He goes ahead and moves. Uh, uh, fair for him that it was a safe movement. I only had one die. And then I'm very happy to have gotten uh, up to nine dice and attack Woodland Realm. I leave one behind because uh, I don't want him to easily be able to coordinate the north if he ever gets the north to war. If at some point I take um, Dale and they scouts or something, it just um, good to block that path. And also, more importantly, the main reason is uh, the Fellowship is coming this way, so at some point um, this guy can be potentially useful to, to get some hunt rerolls. All right, so Fox of Crabane is my first card. That's not great, uh, but, you know, that's fine. The Witch King can cycle it. Um... You know, I'm always I'm starting to think now as Shadow about cruel weather. I want to make sure I get that ideally before he gets to uh, Mordor. So I'm going to try and cycle into that. He gets more Ents, um, and and now he's drawn a power too great. So both of the things uh, as Shadow, I was worried about him having getting Ents, uh, getting Elves early. Uh, he has a power too great. Uh, and certain ships, so nice for him. Um, and we'll see what happens with a power too great, I think, later this turn. So I go ahead. Uh, I, it doesn't make sense, I think, to put more eyes in. One eye is fine. And he declares. I think that makes sense because that turns off um, whatever character cards I have that say if the fellowship is step one or higher. So it makes sense to declare. And, you know, maybe you want to keep that movement in case you want to send somebody back, like if you have Fear Fire Foes or something like that. Um, but at this point, he's, he doesn't have that in his hand. Makes sense to declare. All right, he puts Gandalf back as the guide. Obviously, that's a good choice because he wants now to kill off Gandalf to get him back. We'll see if he manages to do that. I roll three, um, two more eyes, and perfectly nice attacking roll. This is this is a very pleasant pleasant roll for me. Um, and he gets two wills of the west, uh, and he's gonna obviously try and kill off Gandalf. I am happy to miss this roll and miss him. He, I say, I don't mind missing. He makes a little sad face, um, and then I put Lorien under siege, feeling happy to have gotten it. Um, before he managed to get a um, fifth elite or fourth elite in there. Um, maybe it would have made sense for him to uh, use that first Will of the West to um, buff up Lorien, but he knows he has a power too great, so that's going to stall me there, and he knows that um, he really wants to get Gandalf. So I think, I think it was the right choice to move and try and get Gandalf. So, makes sense. All right, um, I go ahead and take Lorien. That's good. He passes. Now that's interesting to me. Um, I guess he knows that I'm not going to attack Lorien yet, so he's holding a power too great to surprise me. Um, no reason to play his hand out. It's a little risky, but not very. So I think that makes sense. Um, I attack Wilden Realm, I cycle uh, Flocks of Curbane, trying to get to, I mean, it's a good card also, um, but I'm trying to get to Cruel Weather. That's my that's my main thinking, and, and the Red Tiles. Uh, get those in the pool too. So he, he plays certain ships here as a combat card, and, you know, I can understand that, because what else is he going to play? But I don't know. Why not? Why not no quarter? I, I I would I think this is just he has enough. He he has you know these elves left in the pool. These guys are both under siege. He doesn't currently have uh, Thranduil's archers or um, the card that reinforces uh, Lorien. I'm blanking on the name. Uh, Celeborn's uh, Galadrium. He doesn't have either of those in hand, so these these guys could well be used for Dolimroth. My inclination is to to save this a little bit. Um, you know, I don't know, but at some point, if uh, certain if uh, Corsairs comes, I really like having 
certain ships in hand if, if my elves are at war. So this, this made me, a shadow made me very happy to see this go away because now I know the best he can do is, as long as Gondor isn't at war, the best he can do is um, the Imrahil of Dol Amroth and that's uh, obviously not nearly as powerful as two elites, two elven elites. Okay, so uh, I managed to get two hits. He manages to roll very badly and get none. And uh, I stop because I'm happy to cycle cards. I have enough attack dice. Not in any rush. Um, it's fine. I get Lure of the Ring. I generally like this. I had to look up, does it combo with Warren with Sorrow and Toil? It does not. So uh, Lure of the Ring does not combo with Warren with Sorrow and Toil. Um, it does effectively do some corruption, but I kind of think to myself, you know, I'm happy to do that corruption by killing off the Fellowship. It doesn't look like he's that likely to be re revealed anytime soon. Um, and... You know, I'm, I'm happy with Orc Patrol. I want to get tiles out. I don't necessarily want to get companions out. Um, and I only have one character die, so I'm, I'm feeling a little tight on that. You'll see that I debate uh, in my next attack against Woodland Realm. I debate what to play. This seemed like the best card to play. It's more important to cycle into the red tiles or into um, uh, Cruel Weather. So that's why I played it, though I do generally like this, and it's nice to have a card that punishes the Fellowship for being revealed. So... Uh, but I go ahead and cycle it. I want to save. I want to save hill trolls to buff up my army, so I can get um, five elites here, and then I want to use we come to kill on Lorien. Um, so my so I want to I want to save these for now. I want to save Nazgul Search to play it as a card. I want to save New Powers Rising to play it as a card. I want to save Work Patrol to play it as a card. Um, so it sort of left me with this to play, and that's why I did it. Um, all right, it turned out that um, I rolled really well, um, got a bunch of damage, and uh, he manages to roll quite poorly. We joke that rolling sixes is a good strategy as shadow. I do recommend rolling sixes as shadow. That is definitely a good strategy. Um, the Woodland Realm battle goes quite poorly for him. It took me two dice, and I took zero casualties. Um, so, you know, if he had, I don't know exactly what the odds of that are, is definitely low odds, but if he had gotten a third elite in there, you know, he would have been rolling a lot more damage all along. Um, the other thing that I'm, I'm realizing I missed talking about it, it showed up in chat, but um, in the first round of combat, I did two hits to him and he chose to lose an elite uh, because he wanted to keep the two regulars, the two elven regulars in the force pool, because then otherwise I could switch to Lorien, and then when I do two hits, he loses two hits in Lorien. Um, I don't know that I actually would have switched to Lorien, because I only have one character die. I don't think that I would do that. We talked about it, but I don't know. I might have, I might have been willing to give up these. Um, these two elven regulars to keep my combat strength up in in woodland realm and try and dish out a little bit more damage and also um if i'm playing charge anyway as three people then um you know why why bother keeping such a big elven pool i mean you never want to you never want to waste these regulars um but i don't know i don't know it, se it seems like it's worth it to maybe keep up the combat strength. I don't know. That was an interesting choice. All right. I'm very happy with this redraw. The ring wraiths are abroad. Um, now my plan is I'm going to... Um, okay, what's my plan here? I think I'm going to use the army die to play hill trolls to power this up. And then on my last attack, I'm going to use the sword to move here and make um, make a good attack with the Witch King. And simultaneously, I'm also going to right. I'm also going to get to move my Nazgul and get the Nazgul in position. So I, I I had I remember now I had quite a lot of tension with this character die because I wanted to get my Nazgul in position. Why not? Uh, we know exactly the path the Fellowship is going to take, or almost exactly. Um, we don't know which of these two spots they're going to go to, but but we know they're going to go here and then 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 here. So why not uh, get Nazgul lined up? So um, I'm thinking 
Uh, so he goes ahead and uses a ring because he really wants to get Gandalf. He has the Will of the West ready to go. Um, I don't have the Southrons and Easterlings at war yet, so he knows he's safe from Day Without Dawn. I think this is a great play. I think this makes a lot of sense. Um, it does give me a ring, but he needs to catch up on dice. He needs to make progress with the Fellowship. He needs to get you know, Gandalf, all, all of the good reasons to use, um, to use a ring. And that was also a little bit why I was waiting on this um, character die. I, I don't mind. I don't mind hitting him if I get a good tile draw, but I also don't mind uh, waiting and him not getting Gandalf. All right, so makes sense. He goes. I hit him and I draw two. That's that's a nice draw um, for him. Now he has forgotten that. Um, what happens when he loses a character with Warm of Sorrow and Toil is that I can take Horn of Gondor. Um, and so that does kind of make, probably make Horn of Gondor a mistake um, from before, but he has Ents in hand and um, he does protect them. Now, I don't know that he has Ents in hand, but he knows he has Ents in hand. Um, it's not exactly clear when he's gonna have a chance to play them, but he is getting Gandalf the White right now um so he they will be active so i don't i don't think it's necessarily that bad um you know not not great but as shadow i'm thinking to myself well this effectively does you know i get the value of four corruption for a two tile um you know maybe he has something better in hand but i think i'll take um you know the obvious uh, one corruption guaranteed. So I get four corruption for this two tile. I'm I'm happy enough with that. Obviously it would have been nicer if he was revealed. Um, but now I also can feel uh, happy about this regular sitting in Old Forest Road because now he's two movement. I know he's going to, I know he's going to land here. So that also gives me a little more time to get my Nazgul in position. I do want to get a Nazgul on Old Forest Road because otherwise he will not have to declare. But as soon as I get one Nazgul on Old Forest Road, then I know he's stuck between Old Forest Road. Uh, sorry, uh, once I get a Nazgul on Old um, Old Ford, I know he's stuck between Old Ford or Old Forest Road because uh, he has two movement. And I don't need to worry about these two spots. All right, so uh, that's fine for me. I go ahead and muster Nazgul in the um, anticipation of moving them with uh, Ringwraiths are abroad. Because I want to get them here, I want to get them here and get prepared. All right, so he has now, he can tell that I'm waiting to attack Lorien. Um, maybe at this point I should... Um, just go ahead and attack Lorien um, and then get two attacks against Lorien because I'm worried about him drawing um, Celeborn's uh, Gladream. So I, I do want to take out Lorien relatively soon. Um, and I could play We Come to Kill for, for three instead of for um, five. But I think to myself, look, I need to buff this up. It's perfectly good to buff it up. Um, I wasn't I wasn't playing around um, a power too great, so it makes sense to do this. And now um, he plays a power too great, which is great timing for him. I think that was just really beautifully played. And now I feel really sad about um, ring wraiths are abroad because it's more efficient to do the attack. I really want to just be attacking Lorian. Um, but now I can't attack, and I'm thinking, did I just cheat by doing that? Can I move Nazgul in? While this card is in play, I can't move an army into attack. Okay, so I wonder, can I still move, um, can I still move Nazgul in? That's an interesting question. Um, this almanac, by the way, is excellent. This is linked in Discord in the, in the questions channel. Uh, it has a lot of really good information. I recommend everybody have this on hand. Um, thank you very much to Roy and Ivar for putting this together. All right, I'm gonna search for um, power to great. All right, so um, it only prevents shadow army units from moving. Any other actions remain allowed, such as shadow armies can move out, Nazgul armenians can, are able to move in. Okay, good, I'm glad I didn't cheat. So that was fine. 
But now I, I want to put a Nazgul on Old Ford, obviously. I want to put an army on Northern um, uh, Ravanian because eventually he's going to get there. I mean, it would be great if I could just stack up Nazgul all the way here, but I don't have quite enough. Um, and I don't want to waste the free movement that I get um, from this card. So I end up putting a Nazgul here, which I don't really want, and a Nazgul here, which I don't really want. I mean, they're not even at war yet. Uh, it's going to be quite some time, but I threaten Corsairs of Umbar because I'm hoping at some point I'm going to draw that. Uh, you know, this is fine. I do seem to be attacking up north. Uh, at some point, I'm going to get them to war. This movement is probably useful. I mean, it's not great. It would be better if I had already had a new powers rising in play, and then I could start merging these these armies that are going to exist there. Um, but the power too great just threw off my timing. Um, but I'm still happy. I get I get my Nazgul in position, Lorien. I get my Nazgul in position, uh, hunting the Fellowship. Uh, you know, I thought about saving this card until later. I could just use a normal character dice, uh, character die to to get my Nazgul in play without without doing the move. Um, maybe that maybe that would have been better. But then I would have had to discard a card. So you know, uh, I don't know. Maybe it was better to save it. It seemed it seemed okay to play it. These movements aren't these movements aren't completely wasted. All right. So I also feel sad because um, my whole plan, which is to get a massive uh, elite army here, five elite army, my only um, army die, my only army card, uh, is we come to kill, which I'm going to have to use to get rid of a power too great. So these elites, sure, still nice. They give me good um, attack strength, but uh, disappointing that my whole we come to kill plan uh, did not come to fruition. I don't know if I should have played around a power too great, and then I would have been able to um, get at least one we come to kill, and I wouldn't have bothered playing it. But then maybe this army isn't big enough to to take out um, Lorien. All right, um, so that was well played on his part. He gets some nice cards. King Brand's men is always great um, to power this up when there's action in the north. It makes it hard to figure out how to how to capture it. Um, you know, the North is nowhere close to war. Um, Dead Men of Dunharrow, fine card. Uh, if he gets Strider, but he's really far away. I don't know if he's if he's getting Strider. We'll see. All right, so he declares, again, same logic. Um, you know, it's interesting to declare there. I don't know that I would have. He's hunted either way, and if he's thinking about getting Strider to the south, that two movement... Um, you know, gets get Strider uh, with one more movement, right? He's from Old Ford. He's one, two, three, four, five, six moves away. Um, and so I might, in that situation, I might not have declared. Um, also, it frees up this Nazgul for me. I can now move this Nazgul uh, farther forward on his path if at some point I move Nazgul again. Um, I'm guessing at this point he's thinking he's not he's not bothering with Strider. He's just going to try and rush forward. When there's one with Sorrow and Toriel in play, I am a little more free with separating companions. So maybe it would maybe it would make sense. Um, you know, I, it's not clear. Strider in the Fellowship. He has five dice now. Um, I think I just wouldn't have declared to keep my options open. My my Nazgul are already basically in place where I want them to be. So any threat from the, you know, play if the fellowship is, is one or higher. I don't know, Nazgul search obviously reveals them, so I that could waste a little time, but yeah, I probably would have stayed there. I would have moved once. That gets me to th three movement plus three for um um Strider's level. I could get to Minas Tirith. I could use a sword to move. I could use um, a sword to separate, and then I could use a um, Will of the West to crown him this turn if if I roll that. I would just keep my options open. All right, let's see what we roll. I allocate one eye, um, roll two more. He does not roll a Will of the West. So it's kind of a moot point. I certainly would not separate Strider um, at this point in the game without a Will of the West. Um, 
All right, so what does he do? He plays King's Brandsman, perfect start, makes total sense, gets his new strategy card, see what's useful, and he draws Book. So Book is really nice. Um, clearly war is coming to the dwarves. Um, I think this is a great draw. I already have um, um, the Witch King in play. So it's not like, at this point, Free wants, certainly is happy to get a lot more um, factions to war. Uh, you know, yeah, if you have a lot of factions at war, then you have to be careful about getting the mouth. Um, but he's nowhere close to that. So this is, this is, I think, just a great card to have, and you'll see um, later he puts it to very good use. All right, so he's happy with that draw. That's really good. I go ahead and, you know, what else am I going to do? I have to... Um, I have to go after uh, Lorien. Um, maybe I should have used a sword. Now nah, I think I think it makes no, there's no no other die to use except this muster. Um, I feel sad to get rid of um, um, this. We come to kill, which would have been incredible, but that's my only choice. I have to do it. I'm not going to sit here with the Witch King without attacking. Um, what else? What character card can I get rid of? I always like drawing tiles, so I'm not going to get rid of that. Nazgul's Search, I thought about it, um, but it's very powerful, the auto-reveal, so that really just leaves dreadful spells. You know, what else could I do? Nothing. So that's what I did. Uh, dreadful spells and, um, and uh, we come to kill, go away. Uh, that was a good use. Uh, very nice, powerful effect of um, new power. Um, a power to great. So it's interesting to see that a power to great not only wasted a die and got rid of um, two cards in general, but specifically it threw off quite a few of my plans. Um, all right. So I go ahead with Lorien. What else am I going to do? Onslaught is not something that I intend to use a bunch of uh, unless I draw, unless I roll really well in my first combat. Um, I, I don't want to risk having to reinforce this army. I want to be able to uh, reinforce it further. I've already spent time reinforcing it with uh, um, the Hill Trolls. So I don't, when I'm playing this, I'm just cycling, right? I'm happy with happy with uh, Nazgul Search. I'm not going to get rid of that. I'm happy with Orc Patrol. I'm, I certainly want to save New Powers Rising for the card effect. Um, so this is really my only choice. At, at this point, I'd really like to get to Corsairs. You know, I, I'm, I now have enough musters that are going to be that are going to be useful um, or, or that, I, you know, I have my main minions in play. The next, my next plan for whenever I roll musters is going to be to get the Southrons and Easterlings to war. I, I'd like to have Corsairs. I've seen charge, I've seen um, certain ships go by. So Dol Amroth will be a very tasty uh, location if I can do it. All right. So um, let's see. I again, continue with my strategy of rolling sixes. He now gets a couple of hits on me plus uh, no quarter. So that's good. Three hits from, from, from him. This is a pretty fair fight, I think. Um, Maybe still a little lucky with me. I don't press. I just want to cycle my Witch King cards. I'm happy to see Desperate Battle. This is a perfectly fine combat card uh, for me to have. And just to notice there, he ended up using one of his um, reserves anyway. Now that does, in, in the Lorian fight, it does leave him with one extra. But thinking back to the Woodland Realm fight, eh, maybe he could have maybe could have gotten rid of those. Um, all right, he goes ahead and moves. That makes sense. Uh, I miss. It's always a little sad to miss that, but so be it. I sort of always expect to miss the first roll. Uh, I mean, that was close to 50-50 odds, but... Okay, uh, continue with Lorien. Uh, I play Desperate Battle. He plays Power of Tom Bombiddle. You know, I think this makes sense. He, he, did a, he had a very nice read on the Desperate Battle, so he's going to protect himself uh, a little bit there. Uh, what else could he play? I like holding. I like holding on to all of these. So I think it makes sense. You know, if I can get this in play, um, it's nice. I don't know that that the North is ever getting to war, but if you do a single muster of the North, then as soon as Carrick or Dale falls, you can start mustering in the other one, and potentially cause some trouble. Um, you, yeah, I don't know. I, it makes sense. I think it makes sense to play it, and he, and he had a good read. So, 
um, I end up uh, getting, again, some good combat rolls. I get one six and two fives, so that's three more hits, and he only gets one on me. Um, so, you know, these combats, these early elven combats are going uh, pretty well for me. At this point, I go ahead and press. He only has two dudes left. Um, I'm not in... Uh, you know, a huge rush, but I'm probably not, I'm not imagining myself repurposing this army that far at this point. Um, and yeah, I don't know, maybe, maybe I should have waited and, and not whittled this army down, but I, I think at this point it makes sense. I'm kind of currently planning on leaving this army in Lorien and definitely not thinking it's going to go somewhere else, so I don't really mind if I would have it down some. I'm going to play um, A New Power is Rising. I'm going to uh, load up in um, in Orthanc, try and take Helm's Deep. I'm going to try and get uh, these guys to war and then take out Erebor because I still have such a good army. So now I'm thinking this is two, this is five, uh, this is um, two more, and then either Pilar Gear. At some point, maybe I'll draw Corsairs. That would be nice. Or I can take Pilar Gear. All right. Um, and again, now I'm super happy. I have I have new powers rising. I have fighting Urukai. This like plans are really coming together for me very nicely. Um, I just press. I just try and roll sixes. I don't roll any sixes. Um, he gets one hit, so be it. I'll press again. Like, he still only has two dudes. Um, and this time I successfully follow my strategy of rolling sixes. So that's good. He doesn't hit me, and there we go. So Lorien is mine. It took a little bit more than I wanted, but still, uh, I would say, a very pleasant uh, foreshadow at this point. All right, he rolls with the Fellowship. Uh, makes sense to keep keep going on. I get a hit and draw three. So, um, you know, I think it makes sense for him to take a random at this point. He's going to lose a card from Mornosaur and Toil. Does he care that much about Ents or Dead Men? At this point, he doesn't see, he doesn't know what's coming um, in, in Orthanc. So, you know, I, I think it makes total sense to take a random companion. And he has a two out of six chance of getting a um, Hobbit who can land in Erebor and activate the book. So he takes a random, he gets a hobbit, they land in Erebor. Um, we wonder, does it trigger Warm of Sauron Toil? Yes, it does, because the hobbit wasn't a guide. Um, the hobbit survives, but it was still taken as a casualty. So he does lose one, and he ends up in Erebor. This, I, I think this turn is going perfectly nicely for him. He's gotten two, um, two movement out of it. And now I'm thinking, okay, I have to have to reposition my Nazgul to get in the right position again. Um, I, what do I do there? Okay, I'm starting to upgrade Orthanc. So I'm hiding um, New Power is Rising, um, and I'm just using my musters to get started. Maybe I should have been mustering um, here. Maybe I should have been moving armies somewhere else. But I think at this point I need I need the musters to um, to get prepare my next battle. Um, all right, so he goes ahead and moves. He told me after the game that he was thinking at this point um, of separating Strider and then using um, the book to get him to Minas Tirith. Um, I think it was wise what he did, which is you want to keep the fellowship moving along. Um, and if you're not going to roll a Will of the West for next turn, uh, you'll feel pretty dumb having Strider out of the Fellowship sitting in Minas Tirith without a Will of the West. So I, I like I like his play, what he actually did. I think that was a good play. Now, it turns out I get a bunch of hits. Sure, it would be nice to draw an eye. I don't. Um, I get a three, though, and he takes a random companion here. Um, again, I think it makes sense to take a random companion. What, what else are you going to do? Um, hope that you don't get Strider. Um, but unfortunately for him, I do get Strider. So he, at least it was efficient from a corruption standpoint. It's not like he lost Strider to a one tile or a two tile. So I don't feel too bad about that as, as free. You know, I, I think I, I think I made the right plays. Um, 
the chances that you get Strider. You know, he took a random um, when there were six. He took a random when there were five, and then got hit um, on the five. Um, you know, certainly, certainly a little unlucky, I would say, for him. Um, but he's still not revealed. The fellowship is making progress. You know, one, two, three. They're they're here. They're two steps away. Um, you know, he has five dice. He should be able to. He should be able to make it in uh, next turn. You know, he's getting he's getting pretty close. Um, and he's fine on corruption, right? Like effectively, he has he's at three corruption, and he has seven points worth of um, companions. So he's like negative four right now. He's at negative four corruption. Um, you know, that's pretty good. Sitting at negative four corruption, two two spaces out, um, and. We haven't drawn that many tiles, and a lot of the um, a lot of the tiles that have been drawn are the higher cost ones. So the ones that are left are, you know, pretty pretty low. I don't think I don't think he's doing incredibly as free. I wouldn't be feeling incredibly safe with the fellowship, um, but I'd feel relatively safe. All right, what this does for me, the fact uh, as shadow, um, the fact that he's not revealed means that. Um, and now that Strider is gone in particular, revealing him now, when I, I, I thought about playing Nazgul Search earlier, um, but revealing him um, now actually costs a whole die, costs a whole movement. And I haven't, I still haven't drawn um, Cruel, we Cruel Weather, so I want to try and give myself more time to draw it. I want to try and slow him down. So now I'm thinking, okay, now that Strider's gone, um, I think it makes sense probably to to play my um, Nazgul Search, but I hadn't quite decided on that yet. I decided to play New Power is Rising. I thought about just using another regular muster um, and waiting, but um, I felt like it's probably big enough. I want to be ready to attack next turn. Um, maybe I should have waited more. He um, plays Book. Now, what's interesting here is, yes, it is nice to play Book here. It is nice to get um, your people to war, um, for sure. But, um, and, and that was his plan from the beginning of the turn, so he played it. Um, but I wonder if he could have waited a little bit on book here and instead use this army muster to move these guys from here to Westham Net and from Fords of Eisen, maybe the leader and the regular, into Helm's Deep. So that when these guys uh, presumably come crashing through, um, they're not gonna they're not gonna take Helm's Deep so easily. So I don't know. Uh, something to something to consider. Now he does have an end card in hand, and he lost he lost one end um, from the War of Sorrow and Toil, but he still has one end in hand. So maybe that's helping him feel um, a little safer. I I don't know. All right, so we talk about the Strider thing, and uh, I go ahead and play Nazgul Search because I really want I want to rearrange my um, my Nazgul so that if he declares next turn, I'm prepared to catch him. Uh, I don't have, as we have, a, as I've said many times, I don't have cruel weather yet. So prior to having cruel weather, I want to slow him down as much as possible, which means putting Nazgul on him and um, delaying him. So uh, I go ahead and get some people set up. I'm, you know, I'm anticipating attacking here. I want to get the Witch King here so I can cycle my cards. Um, I'm also anticipating losing. Um, some number of elites, so I want to make sure I still have five leadership. I think to myself, how many do I really need? I'm thinking these these guys are going to get together. Maybe they're going to go up to Rivendell. Maybe they're going to go to the Shire. Maybe I don't know yet what's going to happen. Maybe these guys are going to come down here to support. Um, I I don't know. Maybe this wasn't the right place for the Nazgul. Maybe it should have been up here if I was coming south. But I sort of imagined I was probably coming north, um, some to to somewhere. Um, also, I'm thinking, you know, I gotta be a little careful. Mori is completely empty. I, I want to be prepared to defend it if he, if I have a bad roll, and I want to be able to get some dudes to to Mori. It wouldn't be bad to be able to move in that way. Okay, I have all my dudes set up. Um, I I leave a Nazgul here because I think, you know what, three three leadership plus whatever these um, wargs are giving is is plenty. All right, so we continue there. He gets revealed, and, and that's going to slow him down, obviously, next turn now that Strider is gone. Um, 
All right, he, uh, he just drew another ent. That's the third ent. Um, I obviously didn't know that. The odds of that um, are pretty low. I actually made a simulation. Uh, IRFA.com slash uh, W O T R for Wuthering underscore um, ent. I think it's singular ent dot php. I'll double check it. I want to make sure I'm saying it right. Um, yeah, ent.php. You can see the simulation. It's a 2% chance that he would have two ent cards in hand right now. So it's very unlikely. And um, you'll see that uh, I don't I don't expect that. So he goes ahead and, and hides. I think that certainly makes sense. Um, I have Orc Patrol and I want to delay his movement as much as possible. So I might as well try and reveal him before he moves. Um, I play it with the uh, sword because um, I really want to be able to cycle. Um, and so I want to use the Palantirs to draw character cards. Right now I don't have any playable character cards um, in combat and I'm preparing to do this attack. So I want to be able to draw into some character cards to be able to um, do this attack. All right, I get lucky. Uh, there were only three tiles out of the whole hunt pool that would reveal him. Um, and I happen to get one of them. It's also particularly bad because it's going to hit him either with Warren Lissor and Toil if he loses a uh, companion, or um, he doesn't really want to lose one of these guys to a to only a one. So um, that was that was pretty lucky for me to draw that. Okay, he just takes the corruption. At least he's now out of range of Morgul Wound, which is a slight uh, silver lining. And then I go ahead and draw cards. I'm feeling so great about this attack on Rohan. I have a giant army here. Uh, I have the Palantir. I have fighting Urukai. It's just gonna be awesome. I'm really excited. Um, he goes ahead and hides. What else can he do? Um, and notice he only drew, he only rolled one um, army movement. So he can't actually get this army from Edoras into Helm's Deep before my attack. Um, so, you know, if he had done it last turn, then he would be able to get it in this turn. Um, Dwarves still wouldn't be at war, but that's not that urgent. Um, okay, I go ahead and get another warg in there because I want to be able to leave some behind. And I go ahead and attack. I don't play... I, 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 I was thinking about playing We Come to Kill. Um, but the odds of him having scouts are pretty high, and I don't want to waste the We Come to Kill on uh, scouts. And I don't really need to cycle it that badly. I would, I, I, maybe I should have played it just to cycle in case he didn't have scouts. Um, but it's such a good attack card with this, with this army here. Um, I, I, would rather, I would rather save it. It always feels bad to not play a combat card when you have the Witch King, especially when you're trying to cycle into... Um, when you're trying to cycle into either, um, any, really anything, uh, but in this case, I was thinking particularly about Corsairs of Umbar or um, Cruel Weather. Now, maybe in, in looking at this now, reflecting on it, um, my plan was to attack Fords, attack Helm's Deep, um, and then use a ring to play the Palantir of Orthanc and then use the Palantir to play Fighting Urukai. Um, so that's why I didn't play the Palantir first. I was I was waiting um, to do the attack at the end at the end of the turn. And you'll see that it turns out um, in an interesting way. All right, so I don't manage to kill um, everybody. Uh, he does one to me, and then I leave three dudes. Um, you know, I'm thinking to myself, I almost left zero dudes. Um, I'm thinking to myself, there's no way, like he probably doesn't have an end card. Maybe he has one. Um, he certainly doesn't have two. There's just no way he could have two. Um, so I left three. Now, that's, I think the thing about three, which maybe in retrospect was a mistake, is that if he did have one, and he had a 30% chance of having one, um, he then has a further 
12% chance of hitting um, all three of my dudes if he if he rolls well enough with that single end card. And so that's like a 4% chance overall, like eight, eight, one eighth of 30%. And do I really, at this point in the game, even thinking he has one end card, do I want to take like a four or 5% chance that he kills Saruman? If I leave one more dude in there, I can probably still take this just fine. I have uh, fighting Urukai. I should have been slightly more cautious just in case and left a fourth one in and that way it would be impossible for him to kill me with a single end. There's just no reason to even give him that chance. Um, as it turns out, it didn't matter or, you know, I, anyway, you'll see what happens. So he plays an end, um, gets two hits and then has the second end <laughs> card, which is really the third end card. Um, and uh, manages to kill Saruman. So it throws off all my plans. I can't play Palantir. This is a dead card in my hand. Fighting Urukai is a dead card in my hand. Balrog of Moria is a dead card in my hand. I went from having a really nice end of this turn to um, something that's not going to work nearly as well. So how cautious do you need to be against Ents? Like, you don't want to be so cautious because what I'm, the reason why I, I wasn't more cautious was I knew I could take Helm's Deep and then I wanted to be able to get onto, um, onto Edoras. And I also didn't want Edoras becoming this giant force that would then be able to retake Helm's Deep if I, if I left that army too weak. But obviously in retrospect, should have left four in there. Uh, okay, so I think for a while, what the heck am I going to do now? Um... I go ahead and keep going. What else can I do? Um, he goes ahead and what did he do? He he muster. I attacked. He musters Rohan. So that's interesting. I I don't know exactly why you muster Rohan there. Like I guess he's thinking I'm not gonna I'm not gonna attack Helm's Deep, which I guess he's right. So might as well use this extra muster um, to muster in Helm's Deep. I mean to muster to start mustering in Edoras. If that makes sense. I mean I think I could also imagine um, mustering in mustering in Erebor because they're already at war. Um, I could maybe see using that muster to get Gondor start towards war, so I can start to prepare for this. I mean, he does have he does have the Emerald of Dol Amroth. So, yeah, I don't know. I, it always feels bad using that muster to when they're just about to be at war. But yeah, I guess it does let him prepare um, Edoras. I don't know that I would have done that, but in but looking at the game and thinking about it, I think it probably was a good play. So nice. All right, I use my muster to get uh, belatedly the Southrons and Easterlings towards war. Maybe someday I'll draw Corsairs. He goes ahead and starts to power up Edoras, which is nice. All right, uh, I draw my character card, continuing to look for um, cool weather and feel happy at least. The, this is obviously bad in Northank, but managed to um, delay the fellowship pretty badly. All right, um, happy to see Day Without Dawn. Maybe that'll be useful at some point. Happy to see the ring is mine. Um, obviously I can get rid of Balrog. I wasn't worried about drawing an extra card because I knew Balrog was, was useless. Um, okay. And Fighting Archive is kind of useless too. And Palantir will be used as a combat card to cycle. Okay. Um, so I happen to roll a bunch of eyes. Um, I could have put in zero and maybe I should have, but I still don't have cruel weather. I still want to at least get some um, hits on them. So, all right, he rolls three wills of the west, and I just drew day without dawn. So obviously that's really nice. My south rounds and easterlings aren't at war yet, but I can get them to war. And what he's thinking is he ends up using the palantir to play elven rope because he wants to be able to move and get there all the way, and he's hoping that I don't have day without dawn. Um, as it turns out, that's a pretty big risk. Um, maybe he needed to be that risky. I don't know. I don't know that I would have been that risky. On the hunt, he will have a 50% chance um, of getting hit, and then within that, maybe a 50% chance of getting revealed. 
um, I guess better than 50% chance of getting revealed. So, you know, he maybe does need, he's thinking he does need all three of these to move, hide, move. Um, but he did just get rid of Saruman, so I think he can maybe slow down a little bit and not worry too much about it. I, I certainly would not. If I roll three Wills of the West, do I really risk losing two dice when I could avoid it? All right, I, I, I managed to miss him on the hunt, which is obviously very nice for him. Um, and now I'm in a situation where clearly, clearly I play Day Without Dawn, right? And now I stop him potentially from getting in unless he uses a ring. He could, he could use a ring to move, um, and he passes. So if he's going to end up using a ring, I think maybe it makes sense to go ahead and use it. Um, I'm thinking at this point, okay, I didn't manage to get Cruel Weather. Surely he is, if I were me, I would use this last die to um, get the Fellowship in while I could. Um, so I, ha I could either... Uh, make this attack on Helm's Deep, play Cruel, Cruel as Death, hoping to draw Cruel Weather, and hoping that when he moves, I don't end up revealing him. Um, I could do that. I have a 1 out of 13 chance of drawing um, Cruel Weather. Seems pretty low odds. Instead, what I think is better is to right now, before he moves, um, play Isildur's Bane, and maybe manage to reveal him. I don't have good odds of revealing him. Um, but, you know, some chances. This is better. This is certainly 2 out of uh, 10 is a lot better than 1 out of 13 um, to stall him. And so I can, I could stall him. Um, and then I could even stall him again if, if I manage to uh, get Crow Weather next turn. So um, it turns out I draw an eye. Oh well. Um, but that was my thinking for, for why to do that. All right, then obviously he moves in, um, and I got I got four hits. I got four hits, and uh, I didn't draw the eye. And I say, oh, that was the wrong order, right? Like obviously I wanted the zero first. Um, he does get revealed um, into Mordor at least, so that's nice for me. And um, I get it too. Nice to not hit an eye at that point. Uh, Warren with Sor Warren, Warren with Sauron Toil doesn't hit because he doesn't have any character cards left. Okay, um, I'm, I use, uh, I'm thinking to myself, I have two rings, I better use one this turn, I can still use one next turn. Um, I need to not delay, not be too slow, because the Fellowship is, you know, cruising along pretty fast. Um, they're revealed, so I know I'm going to have time at the start of next turn to play um, The Ring is Mine, and I want to uh, cycle these character cards um, to get to more red tiles. All right, so, because um, red tiles are just so good, a shadow. Uh, and I want to take out Helm's Deep before whatever more shenanigans. Um, so I managed to do two hits, but I don't press. Um, he does one to me, fine. All right, I redraw. I'm happy to see Candles of Corpses, can do a little damage, and um, we can continue on. Sorry for the sounds in the background. Uh, okay, what else do we have? He draws all the cloaks, that's nice for him. Uh, one eye, obviously, for me. And um, I don't draw any uh, sea dice, so it may be a little tricky for me to move uh, Nazgul around, but I have enough Nazgul around that it's probably okay. Still haven't drawn um, Corsairs. Sure would be nice to have Corsairs now. All right, he, um, let's see. So uh, I guess I missed saw what happened. Um, I pressed last round and did manage to take home steep. That makes sense. Um, all right, I go ahead and move these guys in. Obviously it'd be nice to have the move three card, the, but I don't have it, so I gotta do something. Um, these musters will be fine. So I can get the um, the mouth, and then I can muster. All right. Um, yep. Obviously, getting the mouth. Um, he's still revealed, and I want to get this army connected. Maybe I should be. Maybe I should be getting the um, the red tile in the pool sooner. 
Um, but what I want to do is I want to get this army down to here and then I want to attack with it um, sooner rather than later so that I can start cycling more cards um, with the Witch King and complete this. Uh, I'm thinking now uh, at this point I can probably go for the four cities. I can go for Prelargir, Edoras, um, Dale, and the Shire um, for my final four victory points. And, you know, obviously I'd still like to draw Corsairs, but haven't, haven't drawn it yet. Okay, um, and at this point around now, I'm starting to think about, um, you know, maybe I can also sneak into Erebor. He's probably going to use this to muster. Um, I mean, he used this to move, so um, I might be able to sneak into Erebor. All right, I, now that he's hidden, I obviously play the ring is mine. I want that in the pool. He gets Elven Cloaks in the pool. Um, I go ahead and play Candles of Corpses. Uh, you know, maybe I could have drawn a card with it. Maybe this is uh, unwise, but, um, you know, one and a half corruption is is worth it, I think. to I, I'm still within range. You know, he's at, he's at four minus five. He's at negative one. He's at negative one corruption at the start of the track. You know, like, that's that's close. I, I'm, I'm still in the fight for it. Um, especially if some eyes hit. Um, unfortunately, that misses. And, um, of course, he moves and draws a zero. So nice uh, round one in Mordor for him. Um, I go ahead and sneak into, uh, sneak into Erebor. That seems, that seems like a good plan at this point. I'm thinking this army can probably take it, especially because I have reinforcements here that can back them up if needed. All right. Um, at this point, I roll a bunch of eyes. I don't really want to roll this many eyes because I think I can, at this point, probably get my final four victory points, and um, I don't think that he can um, necessarily, uh, you know, one, two, three, four movement plus reveal is probably not going to happen. All right, so at this point, I'm thinking, can I, can I win this turn? Um, I just don't have quite enough attack dice. This is one, two. This is, you know, too much movement. I just, I, I can't win this turn. And so, um, obviously good to play Dane. Did, I think he just drew that, didn't he? Um, I don't think he had that in hand. Um, okay, either way, that's nice that he had it. I don't think he was holding it. Um, and then uh, I obviously want to slow him down. So if I'm not going to win this turn, I want to get that in the pool. Um, and he starts to reinforce this. Maybe I should have attacked from East Rune into that before, or, or Erebor into that, before he had a chance to muster there. Because obviously what else is he going to do with his musters? I think he's going to muster down in Rohan. So, you know, um, it certainly is a little risky if he musters this up. He can get these guys. I need, I need to deal with this because Woodland Realm isn't that strong. Um... And if this army gets weakened too much, then this army can bust out and I can lose all of the north. So um, maybe it was more important to, to attack that than play, let, let him get you know one extra movement on the track. Um, okay, so uh, I go ahead and attack it. Um, I don't have any character cards to play right now, and that's why I use this to attack. Um, I don't know, maybe it would have been better to say this, I'm really focused on the fellowship, but I know that I want to move these guys, right? Like there's a bunch of army movements I want to do. I want to move these guys in. Um, I want to move these guys over to the, start over to the Shire. All right, um, so I get lucky with that attack to get three hits and um, he, it goes away. He's now mustering up in Rohan, which makes sense. I managed to complete my Rohan army and start getting things moving. He moves. Um, the three, I think, is not too bad for him. Um, what does he lose? He loses Guahir, who, who cares at this point. Um, he can't get Gandalf up to Erebor anyway. So, all right. And then um, I continue with my plan to take the Shire. He moves with a ring, um, which I think is right. I mean, it's a little risky. Um, because the, the hunt pool is not friendly right now. Um, these eyes are doing five in reveal. Um, I th but he does have these very pleasant tiles, right? These are very good tiles for him at this point in the game. So I think that's a little risky, but um, good. Okay, I got um, you know a red tile here. I did get in the pool as soon as I could, and I was cycling into red cards, uh, into character cards. So. You know, uh, he got a zero and then a three and then a red. 
Um, I think this is pretty balanced luck, um, but obviously very good for me when that happens. Um, and then what am I doing here? I'm using this to attack uh, or to keep my armies moving. I'm thinking I need to, either way, these guys need to get there and what else am I gonna do? Might as well move those guys up. I didn't need to do that, but all right. Um, now I'm thinking next turn, I really should be able to win getting four victory points, one, two, three, four. Um, and uh, he should not be able to hide, move, 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 unlikely. Um, with no, with, I think, no rings. All right. Um, so I roll a bunch of eyes again. Um, this is five attacks, so that's good. That's about what I would expect with um, with eight dice. So I get, you know, an average number of attacks. That's I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, and what else can I do? Uh, let's move move on uh, the shadows gather obviously i would have happy would have been happy to have it earlier but now at least i'm gonna use it for the combat effect um if i need it so he musters up in um rohan because you can see that's gonna happen um i go ahead and take the shire first i'm a little worried about like retaking if he's gonna like if i attack this too soon then this army can move around and retake helms deep um I, I so I want to wait on this. I, I kind of want to wait on this, but he has like four attacks here, so um, he could easily cycle into Helm's Deep. And I only have one extra die. I need to make four attacks: one, two, three, four, or four. Either way, um, so I only have one extra die. So if I attack into Edoras, and then he moves, and then he retreats after round one to. Um, to fold, and then on his die he attacks into Westhamnet. Um, I either like it's not it's not really obvious exactly how I can manage this. Um, if he uh, if I if I don't move in enough people into Edoras, then he can attack back um, later in the turn. He can muster up more and fold, and then attack attack back into Edoras. Maybe that's the way I should have gone. Um, it's, uh, I'm not exactly sure exactly the perfect way to have played this turn. Um, the Shire seems like a safe first attack. I'm also a little worried about these guys coming to defend the Shire. Um, because if he can stall me this turn, if I don't win this turn, then his chances of being able to destroy the ring um, go up quite a bit. He can hide and, and move once this turn and then still make it. All right, um, so he's just mustering up in Rohan. I'm continuing um, with uh, Polar Gear. That scouts doesn't really matter. I had some ideas of maybe eventually making it to Dol Amroth, but I just didn't have enough dice uh, to make it there. Um, and I leave one behind. Just I'm thinking about if things go horribly wrong, he can potentially just march into Umbar and uh, march into Orthanc. Um, or march down into Moria. There, there are a lot of if, if dwarves, uh, if North goes to war, then Dol Guldur. It just, I don't know. May, maybe this is a, a waste. Um, but okay, he marches into. He powers up um, Edoras. I mean, this is just an awesome Edoras army. Really cool. Um, and uh, I use the mouth to go ahead and move these guys. So that was my one extra die. Um, I'm now thinking I can take out Edoras. I can easily take out Dale. Um, he's going to use these to hide and move. Um, that's that's going to be my best chances. Um, but then he uses um, he uses Gandalf uh, to get to Dedarus. Um And now this battle looks much shakier. Um, I, I don't actually have good chances at that. So I use my ring um, to go up to Erebor, and. Um, you know, maybe that's a mistake. He goes ahead and hides. I, I don't know what else he could do. Um, this is we did it. We did another battle simulation. Um, irfa.com slash wotr underscore battle underscore erebor dot php. You can see this battle that's about to play out. Um, but basically, I play Mumakil, um, and then I play Deadly Strife, and then I play. Um, onslaught and uh, don't even need the onslaught and just roll sixes so I, I 
I have a slightly better than 50% chance of winning that battle. But obviously, if I don't win that battle, um, things go quite badly for me next round. So I don't know. It seems to it feels to me like there was maybe better ways I could have played this last round. I ended up winning, but um, maybe there are better ways I could have played this last round to not make it quite so risky. Um, I hope this was entertaining. And um, let me know on Discord. I'm Ira on the Discord server. Let me know if um, you watched this and if you if it was uh, good to see.